Welcome along, Killian Bogan with you. I'm very happy to say that I'm now joined by the four-time All-Ireland final referee and the man in the middle for that Armagh v Galway quarterfinal, David Coldrick. David, how are you? I'm good, Killian. Uh, thanks very much. I suspect that a lot of people have uh, can relate to losing or winning a big match as a player or a coach. Very few what it's like to be a referee. When the dust has settled on that Armagh v Galway quarterfinal, what's your reflections on it? Yeah, like I mean, it's it's uh, it, it's hard it's it's hard and different, um, I suppose, as a referee. Um, so obviously, again, like going through the game. Um, you know, you're just kind of going from decision to decision, like, you know, so, um, you know, it's, it's, it is that kind of two, three days afterwards where you reflect, first of all, I suppose you reflect yourself um, on, um, you know, the, the, the good points, the bad points. Um, and then, you know, we, we also uh, collectively have kind of a review session as, as a group of referees um, in the aftermath of, of kind of the weekend's game. So that also um, took place last week as well. So, Look, I mean, the game um, obviously had it all. Um, and, you know, it was, it, you know, as a referee, they're the kind of games that, you know, you want to be involved in. Um, you know, that's what you do all the hard work for in the same way as players want to be involved at this stage of the season. That's that's where you want to be as a referee as well. Um, but um, But like, you know, I think, again, like players, like, you know, to be honest, you really look at it from a refereeing point of view in terms of what learnings you can bring into your next game. Uh, whatever went well, went well, but it's more the learnings to, to kind of move forward because um, that's that's what's important as a, as a referee. Yeah, in 2015, Sean Moran was writing about you in the Irish Times. He said that you were one of the least excitable referees in the championship, but that your polite demeanour was essentially equivalent to a teacher dealing with a difficult class. Did that game test your refereeing skills more than any other? Uh, there are there there are you know different games over the years that have that have tested them. Um, I suppose because um, of the way I suppose the 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 game went and and like I think the intensity grew as as the as the game went on and. You know, I mean, it, it's really from that kind of almost, let's say, the 60th, 65th minute onwards, like, you know, with, with eight or nine minutes of injury time in, in normal in normal time um, where like it, it, it really was intense. And then obviously, um, you know, the uh, the melee happened at full time and we still had to, to, to play 20 minutes of extra time. So so I think that that mental piece definitely um, definitely was testing, I think. You know, I, I like to to try to to kind of stay calm under pressure, um, and and I think you know I did that to the best of my ability. But you're right, like I mean, it certainly was a game that 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 certainly tested that calmness. Um, but um, but yeah, I think it's that 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 mental side um, is, is was very testing, um, particularly as I said, like you know, in in the latter the latter part of the game, uh, no question. As you say, that melee happened on full time. The players are coming back out then for extra time. Did you have any fear, lingering concerns that we could see similarly appalling scenes throughout extra time? No, well, not really. I certainly that certainly wasn't what was what was going through my mind. Um, to be honest, like you know, from uh, you know, from the end of of, of uh, normal time to to starting of, of extra time, uh, it was obviously in so far as we could um trying to 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 deal with the the situation in that kind of um 10 15 minutes break um uh which obviously you know is, is never easy it's not it's not a place a referee wants to to be in um but again you know try to try to deal with it as best i could and and and, and essentially get the game back going again but no I, I i didn't feel that like you know that that was going to uh to run into extra time and and to be honest like you know it's it's like um you just you, you just get going again and, and you referee what's in front of you um but that that certainly wasn't something that was in my head it, it just felt through extra time a little bit that perhaps we're not quite seeing the same intensity as we saw in normal time you sort of felt that the players knew that this incident had happened that it was picked up by the cameras you had taken action like maybe the the intensity throughout extra time just wasn't matched by by what we saw in normal time because of the melee. 
Yeah, possibly. I, I think as well, like, I mean, sometimes or, or, or a lot of the time um, what you see when, when, when teams at that level, particularly, let's say, who have kind of, you know, gone through 70 minutes or almost 80 minutes of, of, uh, of high intensity football, it is, it is very difficult to keep that intensity up then for another 20 minutes. Um, and I think like, you know, look, tiredness uh, creeps in as well, which um, doesn't help that, that, that intensity either. And I mean, you know, I, I've certainly seen kind of extra times in games like that before where you might only have like, you know, a couple of scores um, in 20 minutes. Um, you know, we still had quite a number of scores, you know, a couple of goals as well. Like, you know, so, uh, so there was still a lot going on in extra time, but, um, but I, yeah, like I, I suppose players would, would, uh, would have to speak for themselves in terms of how much the melee affected it. But I think it, I think, you know, just extra time in general, like, you know, can see intensity coming down because players have given so much in that 70 to 80 minutes um, of, of normal playing time. Yeah, well, of course, in a UEFA Champions League final, you might sometimes see the two teams in extra time almost mentally preparing themselves for penalties and consolidating their defence, maybe for the first time ever at that stage in the championship. Teams were thinking along those lines as well. We might get to that a little bit later. Just before we get into the events of that match in a little bit more depth, I mean, it's a tragedy, really. One of the most epic games in the All Ireland Football Championship, probably for me, the most epic game since that Dublin v Kerry All Ireland final in 2011. The Reen O'Neill score was iconic. It's a tragedy that nobody's talking about it. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's that's fair. Um, you know, that's back to you know, it it had it all. It had you know, it had the good, it had the bad, and and just the the not so very nice, like you know. Um, and but but obviously like you know no one likes to see those scenes so i totally understand like you know the um uh the aftermath um and the the focus i suppose that uh, but it, it was unfortunate because certainly looking back on it uh, as i said before it's hard when you're in the middle of it to to kind of know how, how good a game um you know you're actually involved in so so that is you know that is unfortunate but understandable you, you don't realise how good a game it actually is while you're refereeing it. Is it the same case that you don't realise perhaps how fundamentally serious that melee was until you watch it back and you perhaps gauge the reaction a little bit? Yeah, well, no, I mean, I like to be honest, like any time and, and thankfully, <laughs> yeah, certainly I, I, I haven't been involved um, in, in those kinds of incidents uh, too often. Um, and, you, you know, we don't see them too often, um, thankfully. Um, but any time you kind of see an incident of, like that where... You know, where obviously you have 20, 30 kind of players, officials, etc., like you know, in, involved in 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 those kind of scenes. Um, you know, you know how bad they, that is, like you know, and it's just it's obviously as I said just not nice to see, regardless of you know the you know particular instance that there might be within that. Um, to to actually see it, um, at all it is is just not nice. So like I mean, um. While I, I probably wasn't aware of everything that actually happened within the the melee itself, like you know, you knew that um, uh, that this uh, this was not this was not something obviously that that um, that should be part of the game, um, and and no one needs it. And certainly, as a you know, as a referee, like you definitely don't need it either. Right. So just to bring people back to where the game was, that Reen O'Neill last minute free kick sends the game extra time. We saw our man Galway players going down with cramp. Just to get a little bit of insight into perhaps the mind of a referee at that stage, were you thinking, God, I hope my legs make extra time? Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, um, <laughs> you know, um, you know you've, you've now, you've refereed for 80 minutes um, in, in Crow Park, like, you know, um, which is obviously one of the biggest pitches in the country. And now you have to do another 20 or so minutes. Um, but at the same time, you know, again, like players, albeit, as you said, like, you know, certain players were going down with cramp, like, you know, um, I, like the rest of the referees on the on the national panel, we we obviously do a lot um, in terms of our own training, um, both personal training and group training. Um, so I always kind of felt that my fitness uh, was and is at, at a very good level. Um, so it, it wasn't it wasn't particularly worrying me um uh but at the same time it was another 20 minutes so but you know you just get on with it um and um uh and you keep going for that that 20 minutes 
you blow the full time whistle and was it a case of you looking over and seeing that it was out of control or did you see it gradually build up the, the melee? Um, I think um, from memory, like, you know, that, uh, you know, I blew the full, as you said, blew the full time whistle. Um, there were one or two players, um, I think, asking about like, you know, extra time. Um, by the time I turned, um, there was probably already, a, you know, a a good few players um already um involved and then as you said it just um uh, more kind of came from there so it was probably it was uh it was well underway i suppose by the time uh, i actually um got to to see what was actually happening it was well underway i imagine at that point then you and your refereeing team just have to stand back and let things unfold because the reality is if you were to step into that and try and stop things there may be a risk to your own personal safety. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we're always told, like, you know, that if, if um, you know, you're unfortunate enough to be um, to be officiating in, in a game where, where a melee uh, such as that one kind of breaks out, that, um, that we stand back, as you said, and observe. Um, there is no point, um, you know, trying to uh to get well first of all too close as you said for your own safety first of all but then you can't really see anything yourself anyway um if you're that close um so so yeah the protocol is is to to stand back and observe um and then um come together as a team afterwards um and discuss as best uh, we can and and uh, and deal with it as best we can i suppose yeah i'd say it's hard to deal with it in the appropriate way because how can you deal with it appropriately when it was effectively two panels, including coaching staff and non-playing panel members involved? Yeah, that, you're you're absolutely right. It's uh, you know, I mean, it's it's uh, very very difficult for uh, an officiating team um, to to deal with that. Um, but that's why, as I said, like I mean, you you have to. You have to talk talk through kind of what was seen um, as a team and um, and decide as a team then what uh, what we're going to do about it. Um, notwithstanding that it was uh, you know it would never be possible to uh, to deal with it um, you know in its entirety. Like it's just it's just not possible. Melee is the official definition, which is sort of used to describe an event like this. Some would say brawl would be more appropriate. After the match, uh, maybe on the more political side of, of media, there was some conversation about the role of the guard in Croke Park. And basically it was a player steps onto the field of play. They consent to a certain amount of risk to their own personal safety. This went way above and beyond what you could possibly mitigate. If you saw this happening on any street in Ireland, you would want a guard to step in and break it up. Do you think that would have been appropriate in Croke Park on that day? Um, like, I, I suppose personally, um, that's not really my call. Um, you know, I, I'm there as a referee and I'm trying to deal with it. Um, you know, as a referee, um, I suppose, you know, that kind of consideration is, is probably something, um, not really for me to, to, to talk about. I guess it's strange. I guess it's sort of strange because there's been bigger matches in Croke Park where more has been at stake and, I think back to like the 2013 All-Ireland Final, which stays with me for some reason, Cork versus Clare, that replay under lights in Croke Park and everything on the line, and, and yet players don't do this. Is this a trend that's slowly creeping into Gaelic games? I don't know. I don't think so. Like I said, like this, for certainly for me, like, I mean, this was, uh, you know, I don't know when the last time, which is obviously good, um, that, that I officiated at, at a game that had... You know, uh, you know, a serious melee. So, um, so I'm not sure that that that's the case. Like, you know, um, as I said earlier, you don't like to see these things happen. They shouldn't happen. Um, but, but I'm I'm not sure that you can say that it's that it's something that's uh, that's creeping into Gaelic games. You know, more. I I, I just I I don't I don't see that. Arma have been involved in maybe a couple of them this year. Would you have been made aware? Would that have been part of your preparation for the match that you would know that our man had been involved in, let's say, a couple of melees, possibly, and it might be something you would need to look out for? No, not not like that's. It, it wouldn't be like my preparation. Um, 
uh, not, I'd say, unlike you know other referees on the panel, it it it's not that specific. What we do do is we we obviously consider um, uh, things that might happen, and no matter who's playing, one of the things that uh, that I you know be trying to prepare for, and then obviously discuss with uh, with my team beforehand is what do we do in the event um, of of a melee breaking out, like you know, but but it's it's very. It's general. It's back to you know what I mentioned earlier around the protocol that we use. So it's just uh, re-emphasizing that protocol that should a melee uh, break out. But but it's not really um, you know that like what I say to, to my team before any game uh, isn't any different no matter who's you know who I'm going out to referee. Is the official protocol for a melee breaking out that the referee panel would just stand back, let it unfold? And then try their best to make the appropriate action. Yeah, well, I, I suppose I'm calling it protocol. I'm, I'm not sure you know, I, I can call it official or otherwise. Like you know, but ultimately, I think it makes sense. Like you know, to to stand back and observe. Um, as I said earlier, you know, if you're trying to get into the middle of things, um, again, notwithstanding the, the point around safety, um, there's very little that you're going to be able to see if you're if you're in the middle of things. Um, so I think it makes uh, makes sense to 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 stand back and observe, um, and then, as I said, try to deal with it um when it um i suppose resolves itself that conference you and your refereeing team had at half time i have to say i felt for you because it felt effectively like it was a lose lose for you what we saw watching on television was a far more accurate view of of what happened and essentially the viewers at home were in a better place probably to make decisions about that game than you were based on what you could see so Essentially, nothing you could do on the day would have felt appropriate for what happened. Was it a, a lose lose for you? Uh, look, I mean, it, it, I, I'm not sure I describe it as lose lose. Again, it's back to the thing of like, okay, look, I'm the referee, I have a team around me. Um, this has happened. Um, we need to talk about it and we need to try to deal with it. Um, again as best we can uh based on the knowledge that um that we have from what we saw um but as you say um you know we don't we don't have any kind of reruns or anything like that um but but like we had you know ultimately we had to deal with it we had another 20 minutes plus in the end we had penalties as well um that that we had to officiate on so we just need to to deal with it as best we can and and get going again that's it so you so it's not really that you're kind of thinking um you know lose lose here or anything like that you just you know let's let's deal with it let's move on well as you say no reruns uh what's your thoughts on the possible introduction of a video assistant referee support for the referee on the day yeah look i mean uh technology is 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 moving at a speed and has obviously been moving at a speed for quite a number of years and you know, other sports are 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 using kind of you know more and more technology. Obviously, you know we do have the the likes of Hawkeye in in, in Crow Park and Semple. Um, so so it is you know Crow Park or sorry the GA in general I suppose is 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 using technology. Would I be open to it? Yes, I would. I think like you know we'd have to think talk. Um, you know true okay well what would it be used for what wouldn't it be used for you need to weigh it up against you know obviously support to the referee and and the officiating team uh versus um not taking let's say everything out of the referee's hands ultimately the referee has a job to do set of rules to apply as best he can on the day so you know i certainly wouldn't like to see um a lot of that responsibility uh, been taken away from the the referee on the day, but I do think that there is a place for um, technology and, and and more technology being used in the game. Um, but I appreciate that it's not it's not easy and would need to be um, really taught through um, before before kind of making any decisions. Any any which I assume like you know there'd be no rash decisions. But I do think that there is a place for it. All right within the game. Yeah, and it has worked well in other sports. I think we all know about the place it holds in rugby. And 
relatively recently introduced in football, I guess, some teething problems, then you sort of come to the conclusion, well, only a robber complains about CCTV cameras being put up. Um, but w- would you have been frustrated on the day when you were making those decisions about the melee? Like, why should the Sunday game have access to full interrupted uh, coverage and be able to make decisions and you shouldn't? Yeah, well, look, I mean, I have to say that <laughs> there was enough stuff that I was trying to get clear in my head. I certainly wasn't thinking that um, I was being, uh, you know, disadvantaged either by not being able to, to see reruns. Um, ultimately, again, it's back to you can only deal with uh, with what you have on the day. Um, and, and, and the other thing is, like, you know, that in, in the case, obviously, of, of this one and other malaise that have happened over the years, um is that like you know you you do have the powers that be of the committees in charge um that can obviously um deal with uh with issues retrospectively like you know so um ultimately uh i you know i wasn't yeah i certainly wasn't thinking that uh you know that um you know why don't i have um access to to video replays etc like you know um you as i said you, you you deal with it as best you can based on uh based on um you know what we saw and, and what we can recollect um and that that's what happened you did a few two red cards when the players came back out for extra time what was your reasoning behind those decisions well i can't really go into detail of of, of decisions ultimately that that's uh, that's what came out of the discussion um you know that the team had like you know um and and um, you know, based on on that discussion, that's where that's where those red cards came from. I think the official line somewhere, perhaps it wasn't the official line, but I guess contributing to a melee was the reason. You sent off Galway captain Sean Kelly and Armagh joint captain Agent Nugent. Um, there was a perhaps a rumor going around after the match that you sent off those players because they were in a leadership role within the squads. Was there any truth to that? No, absolutely not. Um, ultimately, you know, there is no rule in the rule book um, that says that uh, that that's a possibility um, for for a referee. Um, absolutely not. Like you know, ultimately, um, it is back to what I said before. Um, what uh, what was seen by the team on the day, um, and 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 nothing more. Um, so absolutely no, no. I mean, to be honest, anybody that knows the rules of the game, um, should know that that's, you know, look, I mean, it's, yeah, it's quite laughable. So Sean Kelly had his suspension overturned. Do you then look back and of course with the value of hindsight and think, you know, perhaps I did make the wrong decision or, you know, I could have made a better decision on that? Well, it's like every decision or, or every big decision that you that you make on um, um, on the day of, of a game. Like you know, you always look back and think back on those decisions, but not from the point of view of like you know, well, what happens in the you know the the committee rooms afterwards. Ultimately, um, every player um, you know sent off um, you know on black or red cards or whatever like um, can um, you know has the the right to appeal, and and that makes perfect sense. Um, but from a refereeing perspective, like, you know, what happens there, um, you know, I've done my job on the day. Um, I was happy with the job that I did on the day um, based on the, um, you know, again, based on, on what um, what we discussed, what was seen, et cetera. Um, what happens after that um, is, 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 I suppose, completely out of my hands. Um, you know, so... Um, yeah, that's 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 pretty much it. I guess the concept of the teams entering dressing rooms at, at two different sides of the pitch in Crow Park was sort of bandied around as perhaps a mitigation against this happening again in the future. What would be your thoughts on that? Uh, well, it's, I, it certainly can't do any harm, <laughs> you know. Um, ultimately, again, I suppose that's that's decisions for for Crow Park for for GA authorities. Um, but I suppose any decision that would mean that uh, you know the two teams, you know, at half time, full time, etc., going in um, to dressing rooms um, completely apart uh, from each other, um, you know, certainly would would appear to make sense. Um, so, but but again, it's uh, I suppose that is one for for GA authorities. 
Yeah, I guess the only concern with it would be that it, it's probably a little bit unsustainable if you can't do it in every county ground. And, you know, if there's a, a league match in, in a regional ground and you can't enter the dressing room at, at two different sides of the pitch, you know, it's something that's exclusive to Crow Park. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. But, like, I mean, in some ways, like, you know, is that not what, you know, we've done with Hawkeye? Like, I mean, Hawkeye's in Crow Park and Sample Stadium. That's it. Nowhere else. Um, so, you know, again, as I said, it is for GA authorities to decide, but I, I don't think that just because um, there is an inability to do it, you know, all the way down the line should mean that it shouldn't be done in Crow Park. You know, I, I like that, that, that again, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't seem to make sense to me. Was it a strange experience for you refing the penalties at the end of the match? I, I know Podrick Joyce came out and said, that penalties are not for GA, and you sort of have to take those comments at face value. I'm not going to ask your opinion, obviously, on the rule itself, but was it a strange experience? Yeah, absolutely. It was the first time I've been involved in a, in in a penalty shootout to to decide a game. I know that a couple of my colleagues have, um, over the course of the season, been involved in 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 penalty shootouts. Um, so it definitely was um, a very new experience. Um, ultimately. You know, from the end of extra time to, to getting to penalties was then just making sure, again, between myself and 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 the rest of the team that um, that we were very clear on um, you know the rules around the taking of the penalties and making sure that we made both teams aware of those so that everybody um, was uh, was fully knowledgeable in terms of of how um, the penalties were going to to play out. Um, but yeah, it was it was obviously a very new and very different experience for for all involved, and in, including myself and the team. Just before we finish, David, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't get your sort of overview on where you think Gaelic games refereeing is at. I remember last year reading John Fogarty in the Irish Examiner, and he said that action was needed as the refereeing shortage sort of mirrored the decline of the priesthood, like. Uh, did, w- would you agree with that and how have things reached that level yeah i suppose it depends um i suppose exactly what john was referring to i think there is definitely a shortage of referees uh within the counties i know within my own county in mead um you know um the guys there are are you know in in terms of in in kind of the leadership positions from a refereeing perspective are doing the best they can in order to to try to entice new young referees to take up or young people to take up the whistle. Um, but it is difficult. Um, I think you know at at inter county level, um, you know you, you do still have a a good squad of referees both at national like national league level and then getting up to to the, to the championship panel. Um, and and development of, of of referees at that level um is is positive is going well but there is no doubt that like you know that if the shortage at at county level continues then that is going to that is going to uh, move into inter county because obviously like like players um the the inter county panel of referees effectively come from club level um so 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 you know there is there is definitely work to do to try to um, you know entice people to take up the whistle at, at club level, uh, keep them involved, um, and 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 for those let's say that do see a path to you know all Ireland finals as referees as opposed to players like you know that um, that that path is is very clear and and the development i suppose is um is is possible and there are people that will actually um you know be involved let's say every step along the way let's say for for young referees as as they as they kind of move up the ladder um so there is work to do there's no question there's work to do um but again i think that the um uh, the, the latest um, strategic plan from from the GA um, has put refereeing kind of uh, certainly as, as one of their kind of central planks and, and that's that is good to see. Yeah because you were saying that you like to make yourself available to young referees who have been abused and like I mean I think that must be pretty damning about how freely abuse is given to referees potentially even young referees. 
Yeah, look, I mean, you know, there, there's there's no kind of getting away from the fact that um, um, that abuse is 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 a big problem in refereeing, particularly at those early stages of, of a referee's development. Um, I do think again that like you know work is being done within counties. I know, as I said, certainly within my own county, work is being done to try to um you know take steps to to deal with that i think it's it's obviously up it is important that every referee um you know reports abuse that's the first thing like you know and i would say to, to any any referee like you know you need to report abuse um then it's up to the you know the 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 committees in charge within counties like to stand by their referees um i think that you know, is critical. And, and um, you know, if that happens, I think that will help. That will definitely help the situation. Um, uh, you know, and, and but but there is more that needs to be done. Um, and as I said, hopefully um, this, uh, you know, the, the strategic initiatives that um, that are that are coming out, let's say, on, on the refereeing side um, within within Crow Park, um, you know, will, will aid that piece, let's say, as we as we go into the next couple of years. Have you experienced much abuse yourself throughout your refereeing career? Yeah, look, I mean, I, I think, you know, it's when I started again, like it's again, it's, it goes back to like, you know, the, I think the most, um, let's say, abuse or feedback, let's say, that you that you get from all sides, um, it usually comes like, you know, early in your career um you know but but again it is about like you know well when abuse is over the top um you know and you, you need to you need to report it and and you hope that as i said like you know that the powers that be will stand behind you um but um but yeah I, so yes i have ha you know I, I i have obviously like every referee experienced abuse but but less so as my career has kind of gone on um there there's yeah there's no question about that yeah because as you say it doesn't so much happen at the elite level if you go back to the 11th of december the ulster club semi uh, final between Patrick pierces and mount belly moilo the match referee Jerome Henry came out after and said, you know, I quote, Mount Bellew players surrounded me in a threatening demeanour and were less than one metre away from me as they shouted verbal abuse such as, you're a fucking cheat, you're a fucking prick, why didn't you give us the fucking mark, you fucking robbed us. So, like, I mean, if that's happening at that type of elite level where there is an awareness of the media presence, you'd have to be a little bit concerned about what might be happening at the grassroots level where there won't be the same scrutiny on the match. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I absolutely wouldn't disagree with anything there. And um, ultimately, you know, what you described there, you know, no matter what, it, it is just not acceptable. Um, obviously, as I was kind of saying, and, and similar to, in this case, Jerome, like, I mean, ultimately, that has to be reported and the um, the authorities need to need to deal with it. Like, you know, that that's... So it's not acceptable, but that's how it's dealt with from a refereeing perspective. Rugby does seem to be the sport where referees give respect and get respect. Um, have they done something particularly well in their sport? Or is it just an expectancy that the players will give respect? Yeah, well, obviously it, it's um, it, it's probably going back, you know, well, I don't know how long it's going back. Like, you're right. Like, I mean, I watch rugby as well. I'd, I'd watch most sports. Um and you know there's no doubt that like you know that 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 respect that two-way respect is there again as i said like i think it, it goes back years and years and years and, and it's something that they've kind of brought with them um you know obviously it would be great if that's that's if we could get there from a ga perspective um but um you know we need to take we need to take small steps like you know uh, to try to uh, improve the position um that referees as I said, start I suppose at, at the lowest levels within the counties that uh, um, that they're um, kind of uh, I suppose getting from from a, from an abuse perspective, like you know. But it, but it certainly is. I, I mean, it it should be something that that we're looking at 
um, and saying, well, why can't we get to get to to where rugby is? That's the I suppose pinnacle from a from a respect point of view. Um, but but we you know we need to take we need to take small steps. You know you're not obviously going to get there overnight. Um, uh, but but it does you know we need to we need to focus on it. We need to continue to focus on it. Well, Dave, really appreciate your time tonight. Thanks very much for joining me. Not at all.